Hello and welcome to Catechrist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catechrist.com. Uh, my name is Jason J. Rock Houston and I'm honored to be speaking with the uh, Pulse lead singer, Sean Yane. Am I pronouncing the name right, Sean? Yaney. Yaney, okay. And, and um, so how are you doing today, Sean? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for asking. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, now, um, I gotta be honest, um, I was not really too aware of your band until your publicist sent me um, a little press release on the band and then... Um, I was checking out some of the stuff. I'm pretty impressed. Um, so, how long has um, Pulse been around as a band? We started in July 2011. Oh wow! Um, yeah, and we kind of were some friends that got together to make music. I actually was originally the bass player. Oh wow! But <laughs> so our singer quit right before our first show, and I was thrust into doing vocals so they wouldn't have to cancel. So originally I played bass and sang, but uh, uh, I stopped doing that pretty shortly thereafter. But yeah, we've been around a while. So, um, like, uh, um, why was it that it fell on you to be the singer? Was it just a case that <laughs> of everybody in the band, you had the best voice, or is that what everybody kind of thought? No, I think nobody thought that. I just was only willing to do it, I think, at the time. So, um, like I said, hey, well, I don't want to cancel the show. Let's just do it. If it's bad, it's bad. If it's I like, bad. You know, I like that, you know, like, <laughs> You have the kind of um, the show must go on attitude, and that, that's a great attitude. Um, and, and you know, um, being a bass player, um, you know, I imagine being up on stage. That's kind of like you kind of say it's your your safety net. So um, when you when you turn into being the lead vocalist and the front man, um, um, did you know right away that you were going to um, just be kind of a vocalist and a front man and wanted to get a new bass player? Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, I think. So I think initially it came down to, like, I can't, the, the rhythms became more complicated and the vocal lines became where it was real challenging to do them simultaneously. So I just said, hey, we need to find either a new bass player or a new singer, one or the other. Yeah. And it was easier to find a bass player. So we actually, <laughs> we shuffled some things around and we had Jiggy, um, Justin, uh -huh. Rainbolt. He came in on guitar and our guitar player at the time shifted over to bass and I took over vocals full time and it really kind of freed me up and untethered me from the bass yeah, yeah. And, I, and like kind of took right to it that's kind of in, that's kind of interesting because you know I'm talking to many guys and you're talking to somebody who's just a music fan I can't play a lick of music so anybody that can get up there and sing or play the bass or guitar or whatever I got a huge amount of um, you know respect for but I don't think people realize I've talked to you know other musicians over the years doing these interviews and um a lot of guys tell me, you know, especially somebody who hasn't been a singer all their life and you kind of fall into it, um, it's very difficult, especially like playing, you know, being the front man, being the lead singer, um, playing the guitar or the bass parts, you know, all at the same time, you know, having to concentrate on all that. So um, there, people that are able to do that, that, that is a huge gift, you know. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a challenge, but it, it's fun, though. Yeah. You know, getting the branch out, and I enjoy it. So. And um, <laughs> so what was that transition like for you, Sean? I mean, um, be, having gone from being the bass player, and it sounds like this first time you've ever kind of been a front man, did it take a while for you to adjust to, or is it something you fell in love with right away? No, I kind of really got into it, like being able to move around more freely without, yeah. you know, cumbersome <laughs> cables. I play with wireless, I climb on things and yeah, jump I mean, around I mean, and pretty jump much. I mean, that would be quite different. I mean, pretty much the only thing you got to worry about is, um, you know, the microphone. But then um, you also got that kind of a um, fact that you now know that um, all eyes are on you. You know, everybody um, in the band is important. But you're the front man. You're the, you're the um, lead singer. Um, you're the one guy in the band. Everybody's always kind of um, paying attention. I mean, you probably got to, you know, stop between songs and kind of rap with the audience. Yeah, yeah. But I, I prefer to think of it lead vocalist. Like, I'm I'm not the greatest singer, but I, I have good vocals. I can yeah. get out there, but I'm, I'm a good front man. I have good stage presence. But and, you, I, and I really can connect with the crowd. So I think that's a big part of it. Um, there's some great singers and there's some not so great singers, but there's <laughs> just as much people that can really connect on a, an emotional level with the, with the audience. Oh, I totally, I totally agree with that. I mean, um, you, you look at somebody like David Lee Roth, um, you know, a lot of people say he's not the world's greatest singer, but for what he does, it, you know, yeah. he, he makes it work. He's able to uh, work with it. And, um, you know, I do think there's something to be said for, um, there are certain people that aren't the greatest singer in the world, but, but they're able to work with what they got. And I think, too, there's something to be said that um, maybe you're not the world's greatest singer, but you can sing something more from the heart, let's say, 
if you're the guy that wrote the song, if you're the guy that lived through that, you know, that actually went through that experience, as opposed to somebody just singing a song somebody else wrote, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely, I agree. And it makes it more connected. And that's one thing with all of our music, both musically and lyrically, is it all comes from raw experience, and we try to convey that in our music, you know, and it's, it's really heartfelt, it's really meaningful, and it comes from a place which I feel makes it more relatable. So people who listen to it, I get told quite frequently, you know, like, hey, that song, like, it's right now, it's for my life. That song's working for me. It's making me, you know, help me get through this. That matters to me. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, a, a lot of times, you know, when I'm listening to music, I love to, um, I love to listen to, especially to, you know, songs that got lyrics, especially uh, guys that are great songwriters and tell a story with their songs. I love to listen to the lyrics and try to figure out what the song's about or at least you know, what my interpretation is. Absolutely. It's all open to interpretation, for sure. And, and how much do you love that, like when a fan comes up to you and they tell you, hey, um, I, I, I dig that song you wrote, or I, I seen your music video and it really meant something to me, and, and you hear what it meant to them, maybe you find out, that's not what I wrote the song about, but man, if it, mean, if it meant that to you, that, that's great. Yeah, absolutely, like all the time, because there's a lot of songs that surfacely appear like they're relationship driven and that's true for some but yeah. there, there's quite a few that are more like self-reflective yeah but because it's you know it is open to interpretation so when people get something out of it regardless what it means to you is what it means to you and it's like i'm carrying the emotion but it's not my place to tell you what the song should mean oh yeah i mean uh, and i i think as you know the the guy that wrote the song that's got to mean something to you that that people actually doing more than just listening to the song they're kind of um latching on to it and, and it, it's you know taken on a, a life a meaning of its own yeah absolutely and, and, and as a songwriter that's got to be great because people are really kind of um you know listening to the words and and that probably you poured your heart out you know writing absolutely like I, I, for sure <laughs> some of my favorite um lyricists like uh adam durritz from county crows and justin oh. first and phillips from Blue october like i really appreciate listening to them and again yeah. it's something I interpret it the way that I interpret it and everybody has their own definition and they wrote it for a reason but like that's the beauty of music yeah. you can get what you want out of it and I think kind of a beautiful part about your story um, Sean that you've told me so far today is um, being that you're a front man and that you know you were previously a bass player when, when you guys go in to create the music um, uh, being that you you know you, you did um, hold it you know a bass guitar in your hand at one point you've got a kind of a better understanding i think of what the other guys in the band do that you can kind of relate you know yeah yeah absolutely and it's all very collaborative um there's we don't have any songs that somebody came to like hey everybody has to play this this way oh that's like yeah. it's, it's like hey i've got an idea and then you know justin will play something and then james yeah. uh, our other guitar player will hear it and he'll you know hey well let me see what if i put this to that and i'll come up with a little melody and then David will jump in, and Eric will play something on the drums, and so it really kind of all comes together organically. Yeah. And 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 it's helpful, yeah. That everybody, more or less, everybody in the band can play a different instrument. And uh, we just recently added Tina, who was actually on our first album as a feature. She joined the band full time on keyboard and backing vocals. Oh wow! And now, like, we're beginning the writing process. We just finished the other album and releasing it, but we're starting to like venture into writing now with a the female perspective and, and more of the, you know, the keyboard and kind of stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting. Well, I mean, I, I know this sounds nothing like um, Deep Purple, but, you know, I always loved, um, I always loved bands that had keyboard players. I mean, um, you know, you hear people say all the time that, you know, keyboards suck, they don't belong in rock. I, I, I tend to disagree, you know. I mean, I think it gives it a, another layer of a music. Sure. It, it depends on how it's used and how yeah. liberally. <laughs> You know, and it, she brings in the backing vocals and harmonies. Her and I have always like collaborated well. So there's an, an extra dimension apart from the keyboard, yeah. But the, the vocals and everything else too, and just the, the personalities. You know, the chemistry that comes together with the right group of people. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, you look at like some bands that are more great, like Stone Temple Pilots, yeah. fantastic band. You know, but without Scott Weiland, even though they're still good, the chemistry is not the same. Yeah. The same way, you know what I mean? Yeah. So something to be said for the right, the right group of people. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about that. Um, I recently interviewed um, Derek Sherinian. Um, he, he's a legendary keyboard player in his own right, and um, he was talking to me about you know when I was growing up, and you know I was a huge Van Halen fan. I was into the guitar, and he's like, um, 
when Eddie yeah. Van, I just hated it. He's like, when Eddie Van Halen started getting into the keyboard, I'm like, man, more guitar. But he says, you know, oh, man, I go and become a keyboard player. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you guys are on a great little record label, Dark Star Records. I mean, um, I, I just um, inter interviewed um, a guy from one of the bands on the label, um, Voodoo, uh, the guitar player Jeff from Voodoo Moonshine. And, um, okay. And, you know, they got a great roster of artists. What I love about Dark Star Records is um, they really do a great job of promoting their bands and, and pushing the product. Sure. And they've always been good to us. We've been with Dark Star since 2016, our second album. Um, yeah. Some of our parts. And Jeff and Lloyd and the guys over there have always been fantastic and treated us real well. Yeah. And, you know, we couldn't ask for anything better. And, you know, a f funny thing about Dark Star Records is... Um, one of the first things they released this year was the solo album from um, Tony Martin, who used to be the singer in Black Sabbath. And I, I tell you, I think this has been the best-selling um, album Tony Tony Martin has done like through his career. You know, I think it's even yeah. sold more copies than stuff he did with Black Sabbath, and that's pretty amazing. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They just got a great team, and you guys are your, your new album, Dragonfly, drops. I understand. Um, August 12th, um, and, and it's yeah. being released digitally every, everywhere pretty much. Um, any plans to release any physical copies, or do you know about that yet? We, we do have, um, I think, through the Dark Star Merchandise Store, we'll have some digital copies available, and we'll have them at our shows. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people don't listen to CDs, and that's the argument that yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people give, and we battle that. But I still think, you know, there's also something to be said for having something tangible. You know, when you're at a show and you see a band mm. you really like, just to be able to, like, leave with something in your hand. I, I'm with you. you. Know. That's why I asked. You know, I'm an old school guy, maybe because of my age, but um, I remember back in the day seeing, you know, stuff like um, Kiss Destroyer, Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast, and even before I knew who the band was or anything about the band, you know, I just thought, man, that looks so cool. I, I don't know what that is, but I have to have it. <laughs> And like you said, just even coming home from work today, you know, I love um, having a CD to listen to on the way home to, you know, um, and love to have something in my hand, look, you know, look at the physical copy. It, it really means something. And, and people may not get that these days, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I miss the days of going to a record store. Yes, there used to be places, folks, you could actually go and buy music. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, even like record stores and, you know, but, like vinyl obviously yeah. is still around, but like CDs, I remember, you know, owning albums and like looking through the papers and the booklets inside and, oh me you know, too yeah reading through lyrics and everything and it's just like there was something like magical about that <laughs> to I mean, go home and connect to that it's funny and, like and, the, yeah the last five years the last That's five gone, years but. vinyl has made a huge comeback i mean um, like i just went to a local target they got a huge um vinyl section i, I mean um and then they got a little a little tiny CD section in the corner. If you probably um, you could find stuff like you know um, the Beach Boys' greatest hits, but um, it's very far in between. You know, I, I get everything now. Um, you know, on Amazon, that's about the best place to go. Yeah, well, they got vinyl in the grocery store. Some of them, like <laughs> yeah. around here, it's like my, you know, that's yeah. cool and all. But and I like it. Like I said, I mean, having something tangible, physical is cool. Uh, I wish CDs would stick around, but they're I don't yeah. have one in my vehicle anymore. I, I got you, yeah. yeah. That way. <laughs> um, and, and then, um, you know, talking about, um, I was checking out um, Prepping for an Interview today, um, your video for the song, um, The Way uh, the way Between Two. Talk a little bit about that. Uh, as far as the video? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a cool looking video to me. <laughs> yeah. We did, we, did, we did a video, we wanted to make it simple, but also kind of like, you know, interesting yeah and so doing the black and white and kind of splashes of color yeah um we worked with the videographer on many videos over the past decade um and the canon gang aldridge uh, fields is one of our close friends and um you know he's done several videos for us but he really nailed it with this one um i mean just like i said the, the cinematography is good it's real simple but it like feels big it feels yeah. real it's, emotional it's simple like you said but it's like a big production and what i the, i think what i took notice of and dug the most was um like the the camera was not all just on the lead singer you know it, 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 you, got, you got different shots of each uh, different band member and i thought that was cool yeah yeah well again it's it's uh, and for this band specifically it's not really about any one person no i, I got like you I, I got you i'm the singer but also you know it really 
takes everybody and I'm like supported by some amazing musicians that mm-hmm. without them it, it would not be a very good show if it was just me up there I assure you <laughs> oh yeah I mean I, I mean I, I agree with that to, to the extent that um I've always believed um, no matter what band you're talking about everybody kind of brings something to the table you know I mean yeah, um, yeah. like like even in Molly Crew, Mick Mars is maybe the oldest member of the band but you know what um um, him and Nikki Six wrote, wrote most of those songs, so I mean, everybody kind of brings their influence into the band. Yeah, absolutely, man. And and it, like I said, the chemistry that works is always nice when you have that, both in the writing process, but also on stage. You know, there's yeah. some like choreography is not written, but like being aware of where people are and what kind of where their little space is and yeah. you know where where they feel comfortable. You know, having that really helps. And it's nice. Yeah, could, could, could you imagine if you were in a band that where the pressure was all on you, where nobody else <laughs> contributed or did any of the writing, it was all on you? I mean, you'd be like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, there's, there's some of those around, but, you know, to each their own, whatever works for you and whatever, like I said, whatever brings good music to people. And again, all again I, that's all that really matters. I, I guess it depends on the band, but, but as, as a music fan myself, um, I find some of the best um, bands, the best music, are the ones where people are allowed to contribute and collaborate, and, and it's like, like you said, it's, yeah. all, it's a team effort. Whereas there are a lot of bands where people don't want to give up control, and you know they want to make all the money, so they're going to do all the writing, and they're going to tell everybody else what to do. But um, yeah, and, and listening to to, to this stuff, I'm writing, like, you're writing pop music at that point, you know? Yeah, like that's, yeah. <laughs> that's the difference. And so, but the way between two, talk a little bit about what the song's about, if you don't mind. I mean, it's really, to me, again, because like I said, it's open to interpretation. Yeah, yeah. But to me, where it comes from is like when you finally, and you connect with a person oh, okay. on, on the right wavelength, you know yeah. what I mean? And then like, even if it was difficult in the past, sometimes it just aligns when you when you finally get that wavelength and you're connected, <clears throat> you know? And it's, yeah. it's like about that journey of, you know, difficult and then understanding and connection and then rising above is kind of the whole premise behind it and and i think it's like i said it's a journey to me yeah when, when you're when you're going through that i mean i, I guess yeah <laughs> I, I guess it's, it's, a, it's a great it's a great um concept i guess you could say to you know you could be talking about your significant other you could be talking about maybe a best friend you know that that one person maybe the, the most important person in your life a person you know you can always count on they might drive you crazy but you know what at the end of the day they're always there for you and you're always there for them yeah i mean grandparent yeah whatever mother, father yeah. you know whoever it is you know sometimes there's just a disconnect and then you finally get on the same page um yeah there's something beautiful to that yeah and and um i was curious why did you guys choose that as a first single was it did the record company pick that or did the band pick that song That's funny, yeah. But, you know, like, uh, we, li- we listen to it, and there's some really, there's some great songs on the album, but that was just, I, I think that one, even when we were writing and recording it, yeah. just kind of, like, hey, everybody kind of perked up, man, this is something here. Yeah. We've got we've got a song that's really good, and, you know, you can't listen to it without bobbing your head, and yeah, yeah. it's it, it just, uh, it, you know, it kind of came to the top of its own, you know, but, like, everyone... I mean, I mean, in watching the video today and kind of listening to the track, because I'm watching it, I mean, um, it's a catchy little tune. The tune gets in your head. It's, it's um, so I, I think it, it's very uh, much got a place on, um, you know, radio, and I think people are going to enjoy it. So I, I, it makes sense that you uh, choose a track like that. Yeah, I mean, you know, some things just make sense, and it just kind of works. And yeah. You know, that was one of those, you know, we didn't really have to pick up. Very hard. <laughs> and, and so let me ask you, Sean, how long has it been uh, between albums for the band? Um, the last one was 2016. Oh, okay, not too long, but so well. Yeah. It's, it's been a minute. You know, we were working on stuff and COVID kind of happened and, you know, everybody has their story of that. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't good. <laughs> that, that's the reason I asked because a lot of guys I talk to, that's, you know, one guy I know is in like three different bands and he was telling me, you know, during the COVID, he goes, Pretty much just kept working. He goes, um, I've got my next like five or six albums already, you know, ready to be, <laughs> just waiting to be released. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the writing process, is, like everybody has a lot more ideas, but yeah, like being able more. to come together, you know, was tough. 
Yeah, a lot more like, downtime. Going and connecting with the crowd was tough. I mean, it, it took a lot out of us. Yeah. I mean, there was points in between, you know, 2020, 2021, mostly 2020. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where it was like, you know, are we, are we just kicking tires, you know, at this point? But, you know, we came out of it, and I think everybody's kind of motivated after that. Yeah, and, and we, it, it gave us some new direction and new drive. Having gone but, uh, through all that, I was curious, like, um, when it got time to um, record these new songs, um, being that everybody was locked down and all the COVID and all that, um, was, did you guys have to kind of record your parts separately? Did the band get together in a room? What was the process? Well, we did, we did a lot of, like, exchanging riffs <clears throat> with email parts. Yeah. You know, here's an idea I have. <clears throat> here's something I'm working on. Uh, let me put some lyrics to this. I like that. You know, back and forth. Uh, send it over to Eric. Eric would throw some drums on to send it back. So we had some, you know, back and forth but we really didn't get in and start tracking most of it until you know the beginning of like middle of 2021 when we actually went in to start doing the final um engineering and laying down the tracks so we did get to go in mostly together yeah i mean it's interesting <laughs> and, uh, and that's what i dug because people found you know new ways of you know finding inventive ways of still being able to record and not have to be in the same room i mean I think like um, the last Sammy Hagar album, him and his band, they they would do everything like over Zoom and they, they'd make like a video for each song on the album and they did it that way and, and it's kind of a, a, a cool, unique way. But um, again, I, I dig that bands found a way to, you know, get get their stuff done. Yeah, yeah. like when you decide that you want to do it yeah. and you're like, okay, this is hard, are we going to keep going? Yeah. When you make the decision... Then it's just a matter of, you know, executing, like, okay, well, this is what we decided we want to do, now let's do it, and how are we going to do it? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah of course it could be helped, like you said, but um, even the fact that the last album came out um, in 2016, like, with this new album, Dragonfly, um, like, when you put it on, do you hear the progression? Do you, do you hear, like, a big um, change in the sound, or would you say... Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we... Our first album in 2012, and then from that to 2016, and now from 2016 to Drag Dragonfly is very different, and it kind of r runs a lot of different directions. We've got some real heavy stuff. Yeah. We actually have a couple covers on there that we reinvented in our own kind of version of. Um, <clears throat> we've got some real slow and ambient songs wow. that we never did anything like that before, so it's, you can hear a lot of growth from everyone, yeah. and a lot more influence from perspectively you know what i mean like i'm listening to more of this kind of ambient music right now and so justin's listening to more of this yeah you know, heavy stuff so <laughs> it kind of made kind of this little concoction that worked real well well you know yeah some of my favorite bands are like that i mean um, i mean one band that comes to mind aerosmith i mean uh they've got everything from dream on to walk this way you know um mm -hmm. and so I, I love it when bands do different kinds of you know um you know, songs that keeps it interesting, and, and the reason I was asking if you hear the progression, like from this the last album to this album, is because I would think too, everything you guys have been through with being locked down and not being able to get up and do live shows for quite a while, that's pro you know, it's probably been through a lot. Probably I, the songs I would think um, talk about a lot of different experiences than maybe what you were through before. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, <laughs> we went through like some of us had some major life changes in the process of, wow. you know yeah. the past couple of years um weddings and relationship endings yeah. and like <laughs> children being born all, all kinds of stuff you know in 2016 to 2022 we're six years a lot yeah. happened and you know we're, we're glad that we're still able to you know come together and make things and produce you know music yeah. so did you ever get close because of all that like uh, the band ever breaking up or did you know we're no, we're gonna keep this together so the core that we have like we've we've had some cycling of members okay primarily primarily bass players like ever since like i'm the only bass player that's still in the band <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um but we went through quite a few different bass player yeah. um changes we have a guy now that's been with us for about four years, wow. uh, David, yeah. and he's a pretty, pretty good guy. He's pretty all right. Yeah. Well, you know, you, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you say that, I mean, um, I, I kind of dig that. You know, you're just shuffling members around, and, and it kind of reminds me, like, um, if you think back to the early days of Gen a band like Genesis, Phil Collins started out as a drummer. He's the lead singer now. <laughs> he moved up to right, the, right. 
right. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it just works that way. But yeah, so like, I mean, the guys though that we have, the core, uh, Eric, Justin, yeah. James, and myself, um, again, Tina's relatively yeah. new to everything, but the four of us have basically made that choice. We're kind of ride or die. Yeah. <laughs> like we're just going to keep on going, even if nobody listens to it, even yeah. if nothing, yeah. you know. We're playing and making music for ourselves at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so like um, you mentioned that um, you now have Tina, the keyboard player. Um, um, was it something you wanted to do? Like, did you really set out like um, we want to have the female perspective? So, um, talk a little bit about that we, and how you hooked up yeah, with her. We, we talked about it for a long time. So again, uh, Tina was a feature on two songs on the Show Me the Way album. She did the song "Stay with Us" and also backing vocals on "First to Fight." Um, we didn't really have a lot of keyboard and some textures and stuff yeah. in the first album and second album, same. But it was like along the way, man. There's things that, yeah. like, hey, it'd be nice to have if we could find the right person. Hey, you know, like, what if in this song we could do this? And there's a couple things because Justin plays okay. piano and keyboard. Oh wow! So he, so some of the things that he was writing was like, oh, there's a keyboard part in here. We don't really want to run tracks and have to do that but we want to be able to have the song sound live like it does on the recording yeah so it's just kind of like if we can find the right person and then uh tina happened to be available <laughs> kind of all worked out yeah so, hey, you know let's uh well how do you feel about this and she was interested and i mean we already knew the chemistry mm -hmm. was good because we'd worked together in the past yeah. and it just kind of worked yeah. out and so you guys are from texas right yeah yeah dallas and, fort worth area and so um were you locked down? Um, was Texas locked down too much, or what was that like in Texas like, during the COVID? <laughs> Texas does its own thing. I don't know. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. It's like a little bit the Wild West sometimes, I guess. Like, I don't know. I want to get political, but no, but, but <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm kind of on the side of that. I'll tell you why. Because um, on the flip side, you know, I live here in Los Angeles, California. We got a mayor and a governor out here, but I tell you, they they really want they locked everybody down. I mean. Um, I could not believe it. I mean, the governor here actually got on TV. He was talking about, oh, I don't know, we're able to allow everybody to go uh, go to a movie theater. We may just close down all the movie theaters. And there was talk of a legendary Whiskey Go-Go here, legendary club downtown um, on the Sunset Strip. Oh, yeah. Came real close to closing down because you could imagine a club, you know, clubs like that not um, having any activity for almost two years. They, they lost a lot of revenue. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think, I think big cities like that, like L.A. and yeah. New York, Manhattan especially yeah. I'm sure it was a lot more challenging just because of the sheer number of people and the proximity you know I, I get the concern it makes sense to yeah. me um, I know it's not fun yeah. but like Texas at least, it's a big place it's a lot more space I think it's, it's, a, even you know? it's outside of politics it's, it's I think about giving people a, a choice that's just my perspective I mean it got so crazy in LA that they were um, arresting people for keeping their businesses open you know i mean just crazy um oh, that's wild. <laughs> yeah but 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 i only bring it up because um I, I think it's great to live in a place where you got the choice you know and um so sure. and i was also asking because being that you guys um probably go out and do live shows um did you still have the opportunity to do that in texas or did they shut the lights no, down? not really um like the, for 2020 i'm beginning most of like not most of but yeah. it was very sporadic in 2021 beginning yeah. um but yeah like 2020 is just a shutdown here as far as venues go uh -huh. i mean they let some restaurants stay open and you know but it was i mean it was still bad yeah yeah and so have you guys played a um live show recently since um things have opened up yeah we've been back out at it now for since like i said we played one show in March last year, and then we played a couple more throughout 2021, and then this year we've played probably um, probably in one month, half a dozen or so. Well, that, that's cool. Um, but like, so I got to ask, what, what was that first show back? You know, the first very first show, you guys. <laughs> that must have been like greatest feeling. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, we all went a little bit crazy, and like we were on a bill with some friends of ours and some of the other local bands around here, and we hadn't seen each other at a yeah. show environment. So the alcohol flowed pretty heavily that night. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> but we had a good time, man, and it was refreshing to be back. Like, regardless, you know, everybody, yeah. everybody out had a good time. Well, I um, bet. That's what it's about, you know, when you go see a live yeah. band. And, and, um, and like I said, I imagine people haven't been able to see you in a, you know, that, that long. And um, 
as, as musicians. I bet that was kind of like a real kick-ass raw show, you know, like just getting up there and doing your thing. Oh, absolutely. Like it was just unadulterated. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the way it needs fun. to be. And so um, before we wrap it up, I know you guys have like a, 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 um, a tour coming up. You want to talk a little bit about that, some tour dates? Uh, we have a couple shows. Not a, I wouldn't say a full tour, but Not we have a few things like going dates. On. People can. We have a, um, August nineteenth. We're going to be playing with Corey Feldman, which yeah. is yeah. a personal like goal of mine. I'm pretty excited about. That's cool. Um, I'm a fan of Corey Feldman in general. Yeah, yeah. But um, so we're doing that August nineteenth. We'll be on at the Rail Club in Fort Worth. Uh, we have a couple of casino shows that we're doing in Oklahoma. Um, the Blackhawk Casino. Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> and then, then the big show we have coming up that we're really pushing and pumped for is we are playing in Oklahoma wow. on September fourth. And uh, like out where you guys are, I don't know how familiar everybody is with it, but in the Texas, Oklahoma, Midwest yeah. area, it's kind of a big deal. Well, Rock um, Oklahoma, I've heard about. It. I've never been there, but I, yeah, you definitely uh, people have heard about it. It's, that's a pretty big event. How did you guys yeah, yeah. get get hooked up with an event like that? That's pretty major. Uh, through uh, Dead Concerts, and they have a stage there that is um, a sanctioned part of the festival stage. Oh, wow. That they get some of the up and coming artists, That's and they great. you know accept certain people. <laughs> and, and you know, congratulations, because um, I, I, I'm willing to bet that's probably going to be the biggest um, crowd you guys played for. But but that's that's something to be said for you know, and um, so really, way to go. Yeah, we played. Um, we played a couple festivals. We were up in New Hampshire, uh, Laconia Fest for Laconia Bike Week oh, back wow. in 2017, and that was a pretty pretty big festival. Um, like they had some bigger bands, <laughs> and you know we played. I and mean, we played across the U.S. and you know it's a different sizes, but this will definitely be the biggest. I mean, it's got some of the biggest names on there on the bill, like Corn and mm-hmm. you know uh, Evanescence, Megadeth. Wow! Wow! Like, yeah, that's. Death Punch. I mean, that's quite a diverse... It's a pretty legit festival. That's quite a diverse uh, group of bands, you know, and, and that's pretty. That's what's cool about a festival like that. Um, oh, yeah. I mean... And Cypress Hill's on the same day that we are, too, so that's another rad. <laughs> I it, feel it, like I grew yeah. up listening to them, so. Have you been told how long you guys are going to be allowed to do a set? Your set's going to be allowed to be? Oh, yeah, we have a, a half-hour set, so we're going to get out there and go hard and, and you know, play our hearts out. And, and, and have you given any thought, like, you're going to play a little bit of, a, you know... Of all the stuff th- throughout your catalog, or probably mostly the newer stuff. We're going with, like, we're definitely going to play some of the new stuff, and but we're going with as much as we can pack in, yeah. a little bit from every album, and in all the high intensity, high energy stuff. Um, if we have time at the end, we do have a song we kind of wrote mm-hmm. from being at the festival the year before called oh. Rock Oklahoma. How so. cool! Wow! 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 I mean, talk about irony. I mean that. I mean, like, like you, you, you couldn't have predicted it any yeah. better, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, we went to that festival as a band, and we weren't playing on the stages in, in the main festival, but it was very hot and uncomfortable, and we went back to, uh, you know, recu- regroup at the end of the night, yeah. and we were strumming around on the acoustics, and kind of, a song was created. <laughs> I mean, you, you should really, when you're on stage, you should really tell that story, because, I mean, again, that's almost like... Um, living the dream i mean the dream has come true you, you wrote the song you know a year before and the next year you're you're on the stage right right yeah for sure man like this we're going to try and cram as much as we can yeah. in and like i said half an hour isn't a lot of time yeah but, but, but you get the big hit enough time yeah yeah <laughs> and you probably definitely throw that one in for, for maybe even an encore who knows but um wow that, that that's a great story and, and i gotta tell people that um you know, like I said, just kind of um, learning about the band, but, but part of that is because you got a great publicist and um, Michael Branville. Anybody doesn't know who he is? He's um, he used to be the publicist for um, Kiss, except um, Britney Spears. He's worked with a lot of great artists, and he gets me a lot of great interviews. So um, you guys got a great team of people behind you. Um, for sure. Yeah, we're blessed in that regard, and, and we're grateful. Um, you know, everybody that we're working with um, has been nothing but positive to work with, and they're they're blowing our expectations away on everything so yeah 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 so um dragonfly is the name of the album like i said it drops um august 12th um and you want to let people know where they can find you in the band online uh yeah you can the easiest way is go to pulse-band.com and that will have a link to all of our other 
other social media our iTunes, Apple Music, Spotify. Um, I don't know if TikTok's on there yet. Okay. The mm-hmm. other thing you can search is Pulse DFW, as in Dallas, Fort Worth. Mm-hmm. And that should, if you just want to Google it, that'll help us come up as well. Okay. But it is kind of a common term, so it can be a little challenging to find. That's why if you just go to the website, it's the easiest way. Yeah, that, that's the best um, place in, in this interview. Is, you know, I always um, love to ask people... Um, you know, could, could you share the story of how you came up with the band's name? Because I know that's one of the hardest things to do. And like you said, that's, um, you just type in post, a lot of things come up. But so how did you guys come up with that? Man, uh, our original drummer, um, way back in 2011, he, we were trying and trying to come up with something. We had a bunch of different pending names. And he just threw it out there. I was like, I like it. It's simple and I'm tired of arguing about yeah, it. So yeah, let's just go. go with it. Yeah. In retrospect, I wish yeah. <laughs> I wish we'd have picked something a little more yeah. um, uncommon yeah. and make it easier in the internet age to be, you know, found for the the right search results. But yeah, I mean, nevertheless, I'll, it is what it is. Yeah, you want to hear a funny story? But I got this other guy that um, he, uh, he's a musician and he's in this tribute band that's called Farmer Bob, and they do great. They do like uh, recordings of you know like their favorite classic tunes. Like he he covers everything from. You know, Black Sabbath to Styx, um, Boston, and, and anyway, so um, you can just imagine, um, you type in Farmer Bob, that's the name of his band, and all kinds of things come up. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure some not safe for work, too. But, yeah, 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 yeah. Just and, leave your mind go where it will, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, there you have it. But, and, yeah, I mean, the, the name yeah. became uh, what it is just off of kind of like, Hey, it's not even that important. Let's just go play some yeah, music. You know, like, even in looking for your um, uh, Facebook page, I had to, I had to put like fo- uh, Pulse Band, and, and then it finally comes up. But um, yeah. but, but anyway, Sean, uh, thanks for taking time. As you can see, um, I love I could I could spend all hours talking to um, anybody about music. Um, I'm a real big fan. So thanks for taking time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. Yeah. And, and if you um, I appreciate it. if you like the way the interview came out, I'd like to urge you to keep in touch and. Um, Maybe next time you drop another single, we could do this again because um, once once uh, we have you on the show, we, we love to say you're family and you're welcome back anytime. Definitely, man. I appreciate it. And then the next time I try and coordinate, we can bring a couple of the other guys on too. Oh, yeah. We okay. always we always love that. But um, we get whoever is available. That's, that's how we do it. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I understand. And, and you no know, problem, man. I, I, really, I really do enjoy um, like bringing other people on. And, and I'll tell you why. Because like I said... Um, I talk to you all um, as often as you want, Sean, and you bring on the rest of your band because you know why? Everybody in the band has a different story to tell. They bring a different perspective, you know? (laughs) Yeah, perspective is different depending on who you ask. Absolutely. Well, you take care, my friend, and like I said, the interview will be going up in the next week. I'll be sure to let Mike know when it goes up, and you're welcome to share it at that point anytime you want. Cool, man. I appreciate it, man. Take Um, care. We'll talk again soon. Okay, bye-bye. Chaotic Drift Magazine.